The immediate next need after you deploy a resource into Azure is to figure out how to keep an eye on it and to monitor it, to figure out if it even finished doing what you asked it to. So the very appropriately named Azure Monitor is a service whose primary focus is data evaluation. It's important to realize that the Azure Monitor service is not directly monitoring objects. That's not actually how Azure functions. Now, there are a whole slew of ways of directly monitoring uh, objects and resources within Azure. Uh, this, of course, isn't within question. But specifically, Azure Monitor actually operates by doing the data evaluation of data that is collected within a log analytics workspace. The log analytics workspace is the center of data collection and analysis within Azure. And there's a real simple reason why it actually operates this way. If you think about it, if you have a VM and maybe a database, maybe you've got some web apps, you've also got support services like your recovery vault for your backups, Active Directory itself, and what about the networking infrastructure? We've got uh, networking, VNet, right? we've got network security groups. All of these different objects are created within Azure individually and deployed individually. And they are capable of generating event log traffic and performance information and storing it so that it can be evaluated and even reviewed in real time. But that's the whole kicker, right? All of these objects need to have that information stored somewhere. And storage is where Microsoft comes in and makes their money back. So they create all these things. A lot of this stuff you can even deploy completely for free. But if you want to monitor it, you need to pay for the storage. Now, fortunately, most of these things use very little storage. So initially, on an individual basis, on the micro, it, very inexpensive. From a practical perspective, this connection point is the log analytics workspace. We just point all of these objects to the log analytic workspace, which is going to be the dashboard for various storage accounts. So in the case of most of these, it's just going to be flat table or flat files that are written to an Azure storage account that is then mounted, there's the term of the day, mounted storage to the log analytics workspace. The log analytics workspace is then reviewed by Azure Monitor. So it's doing the data analysis of all of these different resources, and then it's providing to us some insights and other notifications, or notification-worthy information. So working backwards from Azure Monitor, we're gonna see how this all comes together. Here's our Azure Monitor blade that we can find by just doing a quick search in our Azure portal. The Azure Monitor blade, if we scroll down, you can see all the different things that we'd expect it to be able to monitor, various things. Wonderful, right? Now on our Azure Monitor Overview page, it's going to break down all of the different functions here into three different categories. The Monitor and Visualize Metrics, Analyze Logs, and Alerts and Actions. Looking at the first one, this is the fun stuff because it's not actually based on log analytics. This is background information that Azure is already storing because a lot of it has to do with how your billing is set up. So for instance, if we include, we do a new chart and we're gonna look for, let's see here, let's do virtual machines. We do our virtual machines out, we can see some of the metrics we can look for are disk consumption, how many CPU credits we're using, percentage of the CPU, bandwidth consumption. All of these ultimately can be tied back to some sort of charge. So Microsoft isn't storing those in event logs within the resource itself. Of course not. They want that information themselves and they're sharing it with you by saying, hey, if you're interested in seeing the consumption rate of the uh, CPU credits, which, yeah, these machines are doing nothing, <laughs> uh, you can definitely pull it up and look here in the metrics. That's all kinds of fun. So metrics, which is going to be centered around data that Azure is saving itself, that's probably cost related. Log analytics, this is what we were talking about. This is where we really get down into what's going on within each resource. And you can see here in this environment, when you, I do a search for across the entire subscription, it says no results found. You can see this down here in the bottom. What it's saying is it can't find any logs to analyze because there's no place for them to be stored or presented. 
which is us coming back to doing the log analytics workspace and then connecting the event storage that we have for all our various resources and presenting to it. And we're not going to go through that process right now because it's not terribly relevant to what we're discussing, but that's how we get here for analyzing logs. The monitor and visualizing metrics, that's based on information already within Azure. And then if we want to do something with all of that, we come back to setup alerts and actions. We start off creating a new one by specifying a resource. Probably the easiest thing for me to do is another virtual machine. Let's see what we can find. There's a VM. Hey, there's one. Cool. Done. So whenever that thing, let's add a condition. It's probably going to be specific to, yep, you guessed it, virtual machines. Cool. We've also got actions down here. Action groups are the collection of emails, phone numbers. Well, and we can customize our alert to whatever we need it to do for us. So the primary function of Azure Monitor is to provide metrics and monitor information on the Azure resource information itself, which is going to directly correlate with performance and costs then it's also going to allow you to query and analyze logs, which are internally generated data streams coming from the resources and stored and accessed via Log Analytics Workspace. Lastly, you can set up alerts and actions based on the previous two sets of data. One final thing I wanted to point out is that if we come down here to alerts, which gives us an idea of the different alerts that are already set. This is a starting dashboard for creating these. If we go to Manage Actions, it's going to show us our action groups. These are the collections of notifications, right? Who we're notifying and how we're getting through it. This one here, notice how it's configured for email and push. Now I'm going to edit that and we can see what it's asking is it'll send an email if this is triggered. It could send a phone. It will also send a notification to the Azure app if the push notifications are enabled on the app and this person has the app installed on a smartphone. When we looked at this here in a previous video about those notifications, this is how you trigger those, is by building in uh, actions or alerts in Azure Monitor and a few other places that can trigger this Azure app push notification. So Azure is collecting quite a bit of data for us about our resources already. Obviously they have their own motivations to do so, but they've made that data available to us in a, in a, in a visual metric fashion. They've also given us the ability to collect data from the inside of resources so we can track how they're performing and how they're operating, how they're configured. And then we've got some tools where we can have all of that data collected and evaluated. We can have uh, consistency and performance rules weighed against it, and we can create alerts and notifications and even take actions in an automated fashion all within this Azure Monitor Blade. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.